the overall mission of the EPA is to protect human health and the environment. I work in the Air Enforcement and Compliance Assurance Branch, so we ensure that companies are following the Clean Air Act. We have folks who do monitoring and um, other types of research and assessment, but my job specifically is um, implementing the regulations and making sure that companies follow the regulations. So I work in a variety of industrial sectors. I mean, basically anything you can think of that has to has emissions to the air, um, from the smallest small business, scrap yards, you know, printing companies, up to coal-fired power plants. And so it really depends on um, what particular cases I might be working on at that time. Um, every once in a while I'll get a case that has a special um, amount of public interest. And so um, sand mining has been such a, a, a really um, something that's very front and center for a lot of communities and it's, it has a, a big public interest component. And so um, currently I'm doing a lot of more work interaction with the public, but a lot of what we do is kind of behind the scenes. One of the recent, more recent goals of the EPA administrator is to make a visible difference in communities. Um, we make a difference all the time in communities, but it's really nice to have that chance to really tell people what we're doing and, and what, we're, what we're about and why we're in their community. When someone calls the EPA with a question or a complaint about an odor in their area, you know, I'm often the one on the other end of the phone taking down their information and, and investigating it. My favorite story about fielding it, one of those Friday afternoon citizen calls, and there was this company near her home who was, was polluting her air, and whenever she was downwind, she had to leave her house because she would have these horrible health reactions. And she told me a lot of details about the name of the company and, um, and, and what, it, what it did, and so I took down the information, okay, thank you very much. Um, but Monday morning came and looked it up and we hadn't been there. So I went out and they, um, they uh, coat sand with resin. It's a, another industry that's related to the oil and gas industry um, where they have the sand that they pump into the uh, fracking fluid to hold open the fissures of, um, that in the rock. And it's a phenol formaldehyde-based resin well, formaldehyde is a known human carcinogen, um, classified by many agencies that way. And lo and behold, this company was creating an increased cancer risk in the community. And um, so we went out and uh, it took us about two years of collecting information and negotiating with the company, but getting them to control their emissions by, by 92% and eliminating the cancer risk. The agency has some new regulations that are related to oil and gas uh, production and extraction and there are many many different emission points from you know, the wellhead um, the storage vessels the transport all this all these different components of the process and the emissions that are um, emitted are, are mostly methane um, which is a potent greenhouse gas and um, volatile organic compounds VOCs which is also a, a regulated pollutant under the Clean Air Act and we have a, a pretty cool new tool, um, the, an infrared camera, where we can go out and we can actually see the emissions. It's just been a, a really, a really great tool to see what we can't, we haven't been able to see before, and it really helps people understand um, what this, what the problem looks like. It, it adds a visual to, to um, this problem, which is kind of a challenge sometimes when you're dealing with air regulations because most of the pollutants we're talking about are not visible. I like the, the fact that I get to work with a lot of different people, you know, for every case I might have a different colleague and a different attorney um, and everyone brings a different perspective to the table. Well, my, my work as an environmental scientist at EPA is always changing just because the nature of the regulations are always changing, industries are always changing. Um, I'm excited to be working on oil and gas in the industry and that particular sector because it has such a relationship to climate change. And I also do a lot of work um, related to ozone depleting substances, which um, some people know are also potent greenhouse gases. And so the President's Climate Action Plan has really put a spotlight on the two programs that I think are the nearest and dearest to my heart. And um, I'm really looking forward to how those are gonna have more of a climate change focus. My 
undergrad degree is in biology, actually. You know, when you're a science major, you don't really know what's out there, so I picked biology. And I was one of the very, very few non-pre-med students, so I think my experience um, as a bio major might have been different than a lot of people's. But I managed to graduate with a, a bio degree and get a teaching certificate. And so I went on to teach uh, seventh and eighth grade science, both life science and physical science. I had a good time getting kids excited about um, their environment, their, their urban Chicago environment as well. But part of that job was, um, was getting them excited and telling them about what kinds of great careers and great things they could do with a science degree and why science was so important um, to our daily lives. And after a while, I just kind of felt like that's what I want to be doing. I want to be actually doing the science. And so I made the decision to um, go back and get a master's degree, and I knew that biology wasn't quite the right fit for me, so I wanted to pick something that was um, really con connected with my interests and my values. So I think if I, had, if I had to do it all over again, I certainly wouldn't have started with biology. I would have just come straight to, to the geosciences, because um, that's where I belong. But it was, it was a good I think any good environmental scientist or scientist in general should have a willingness to just dig in and research an issue really deeply. I think what makes people successful in this job is asking a lot of questions. Um, just how things are done, why are we doing things this way, how does it relate, um, why is it important. Those kind of questions are, are what make people successful. So I think anyone who can be um, taking that initiative um, to really just understand what they can offer and where they can uh, take their work. I think that's something that will make people successful and what we need more of. I think there's a place for anybody who's interested in environmental science and geosciences in general if, um, if you're looking for more of a research-based or a um, public policy-based, um, you know, public service, anything like that. There's, there's a good fit for anybody within the discipline who just has that general interest and passion. I see my position as being a part of this long continuum of um, people doing research in, in geosciences. So that's what I think is the most exciting part of just being in the air enforcement branch at EPA is that um, the, the impact that I can have in this job is just tremendous and it really builds on the hard work that other people have, have laid down before me. Modern day environmentalists are people who um, believe that we can do good things for the environment and move um, technology forward at the same time, move the economy forward at the same time, and that really is the reality of, I think, of the situation we're in today. So um, I'd like to see people's viewpoints on what is an environmentalist change. I think there's an environmental issue in every community um, whether people realize it or not, um, whether you're in a really rural environment and it's based on a concern for groundwater or you know, droughts for your crops, uh, down to the urban issues of, of water pollution and industrial pollution or um, just you know, how we get our energy. I think that's such a, a topic that is really becoming front and center also is just um, how do we support our lifestyle and it affects everybody.